I had a patient, Janet, 62 years old, eight years of insomnia. She tried everything, melatonin, Ambien, meditation apps, warm milk, you name it. What finally worked? That's what we're revealing today. But here's the thing, it wasn't what she thought. And it definitely wasn't the 10 milligram melatonin she'd been taking. 10 milligrams? That's 30 times too much. Exactly. And that's just one of the mistakes we're going to cover. Hey everyone, Michael Harris here. And Hiroshi Saito. Today we're talking about five specific supplements that help lower nighttime cortisol and improve deep sleep. Now before you tune out thinking this is another supplement pitch, I'm a cardiologist, not a naturopath. I was skeptical too. But the research changed both our minds. Right. And here's what most people get wrong. They think more is better. Higher dose, faster results. When actually it's the opposite especially after 60. Today we're covering the big three that most people know but use incorrectly. Magnesium, L-theanine, and glycine. And then the controversial two, melatonin and ashwagandha. These require serious caution. By the end, you'll know exactly what Janet's combination was, the timing, the doses, and most importantly, what to avoid because the wrong supplement at the wrong time can make insomnia worse. First, we need to talk about why cortisol becomes a problem at night, especially after 50. Because if you don't understand the mechanism, none of this makes sense. In Japan, we call the hours between 2 and 4 a.m. the devil's hours, mano jikan, because that's when cortisol wakes people up. That's exactly right. Cortisol is supposed to be at its lowest around midnight to 2 a.m. That's when your body does deep repair work. But for many people over 50, cortisol spikes instead of dropping. And there are specific triggers. Number one, chronic stress. Your adrenal glands are in overdrive all day. They don't know how to shut off at night. Screen time before bed is another major trigger. Blue light tells your brain it's still daytime. Late eating. If you eat a big meal at 8 or 9 p.m., insulin spikes, which triggers cortisol. Your body thinks it needs to be awake to digest. And for women going through menopause, declining estrogen directly increases nighttime cortisol. So when cortisol is elevated at night, what happens to your sleep architecture? This is critical to understand. You might fall asleep initially, but you wake up at 2 or 3 a.m. wide awake, mind racing. Because cortisol suppresses melatonin. They're inversely related. High cortisol equals low melatonin. And when melatonin is suppressed, you lose deep, slow-wave sleep. That's the stage where your brain clears waste, consolidates memory. A study from Stanford in 2018 found that people with elevated nighttime cortisol had 40% less slow wave sleep compared to normal cortisol levels. And over time, chronic sleep deprivation from high cortisol increases risk of diabetes, heart disease, cognitive decline. So the goal isn't just to fall asleep. It's to lower cortisol so your body can access deep, restorative sleep. This is where the five supplements come in. They work on different pathways to help cortisol naturally decline. Let's start with the big three. First one, magnesium glycinate. Not magnesium oxide, not magnesium citrate. Glycinate is the form that crosses the blood-brain barrier. Right. Magnesium regulates the HPA axis. That's hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. It's the stress response system. When magnesium levels are low, the HPA axis stays activated. Cortisol keeps pumping out. A Johns Hopkins study in 2020 found that magnesium supplementation reduced nighttime cortisol by 23% in participants over 55. And it also activates GABA receptors in the brain. GABA is your calming neurotransmitter. So magnesium has a dual action. It turns down stress response and turns up relaxation response. 
The dose we recommend is 300 to 400 milligrams of magnesium glycinate, taken one hour before bed. And here's a mistake people make. They take it with calcium. Calcium competes for absorption. Take magnesium alone. In Japan, we get magnesium from seaweed, tofu, and green tea. But after 60, absorption declines, so supplementation makes sense. Second supplement, L-theanine. This is the compound found in green tea that creates that calm, alert state. L-theanine crosses the blood-brain barrier and increases alpha brain waves. That's the relax but awake state. It also modulates cortisol indirectly by reducing the perception of stress. You feel calmer, so your body stops producing as much cortisol. A study from Osaka University showed that 200 milligrams of L-theanine before bed reduced waking episodes by 35%. The dose we use is 200 to 400 milligrams, taken about 30 to 45 minutes before bed. And you can combine it with magnesium. They work synergistically. Third one, and this is the one most people haven't heard of, glycine. Glycine is an amino acid. In Japan, we get it from bone broth collagen-rich foods like fish skin. Glycine does something really unique. It lowers your core body temperature slightly, which signals to your brain that it's time to sleep. That same Osaka study found that three grams of glycine before bed improved sleep quality and reduced daytime fatigue. And it works fast. People report feeling the effect within 30 minutes. The dose is three grams, which sounds like a lot but it's just one scoop of powder mixed in water. You take it right before bed, not an hour before. Timing matters with glycine. So those are the big three. Magnesium glycinate, L-theanine, glycine. Safe, well-studied, minimal side effects. But now we get to the controversial two. And I have to warn you, what I'm about to say about melatonin is going to shock most people. Including me, the first time I heard it. Most melatonin supplements in the US are five to 10 milligrams. Some are even 20 milligrams. And what should a dose be? 0.3 milligrams, 0.3. Wait, so the typical dose is 30 times too high? At minimum. And here's why high dose melatonin backfires. Your body naturally produces about 0.3 milligrams at night. So when you take 10 milligrams, you're flooding your system with 30 times more than it's designed to handle. And your brain says, okay, I don't need to make my own anymore. So your natural production shuts down. Which creates dependency. You can't sleep without it. Exactly. Plus, high doses cause next day grogginess, vivid nightmares, and they can actually increase nighttime waking. A study from MIT found that 0.3 milligrams was more effective for sleep onset than three milligrams. The problem is you can't find 0.3 milligram tablets in most stores. You have to cut a one milligram tablet into thirds or find liquid melatonin and dose it precisely. And timing matters. Take it two to three hours before bed not right before. It needs time to signal your circadian rhythm. I used to recommend five milligrams. I was wrong. The data is clear. Less is more with melatonin. Now, the fifth supplement is ashwagandha. And this one requires serious caution. Ashwagandha is an adaptogen. It helps your body adapt to stress by modulating cortisol production. Studies show it can reduce cortisol by 25 to 30 percent when taken consistently for eight weeks. The problem is ashwagandha affects thyroid hormone. It increases T3 and T4 production. For someone with hypothyroidism, that might be helpful. But for someone with normal or high thyroid function, it can cause problems. I had a patient, 58-year-old woman, started taking ashwagandha for stress. Three months later, she's anxious, heart palpitations, can't sleep. Hypothyroidism symptoms? Exactly. We tested her thyroid. T3 
TSH was suppressed, T4 was elevated. We stopped the ashwagandha and within six weeks everything normalized. In Japan, ashwagandha became trendy a few years ago. We saw a spike in thyroid issues, especially in women over 50. So if you're going to use ashwagandha, get your thyroid tested first and monitor it every three months. The dose is 300 to 500 milligrams of a standardized extract taken in the evening, but only if your thyroid is normal. And never take it if you're pregnant, breastfeeding, or have autoimmune thyroid disease like Hashimoto's. Now let's talk about how to combine these, because timing and order matter. If you're just starting out, don't take all five at once. That's a recipe for confusion. You won't know what's working. Start with magnesium glycinate only. Take it for one week, see how you respond. If magnesium helps, but you're still waking up at night, add L-theanine in week two. By week three, if you're still having trouble with sleep onset, add glycine right before bed. Those three, magnesium, L-theanine, glycine, can be taken together safely. No interactions, no contraindications. If after three weeks you are still struggling, then consider melatonin. But remember, 0.3 milligrams, two to three hours before bed. And ashwagandha is reserved for people with confirmed high cortisol and normal thyroid function. It's not for everyone. Here's the timeline I recommend. 7 p.m. Take melatonin if using. 9 p.m. Take magnesium and L-theanine. Right before bed, glycine. And what about drug interactions? This is critical, especially for people over 60 on multiple medications. Magnesium can interfere with antibiotics, bisphosphonates for osteoporosis, and thyroid medication. Take those in the morning, magnesium at night. L-theanine is very safe, but if you're on blood pressure medication, monitor your BP. It can lower it slightly. Melatonin can interact with blood thinners like warfarin and it increases blood sugar slightly, so diabetics need to monitor closely. Ashwagandha should never be combined with thyroid medication unless your doctor supervises. It can cause hyperthyroidism. And if you're on sedatives or benzodiazepines, adding these supplements can cause excessive sedation. Talk to your doctor first. All right, let's come back to Janet. Remember her from the beginning? Eight years of insomnia, tried everything. What was her final protocol? We tested her cortisol. It was elevated at night. We also found low magnesium and borderline low thyroid, so ashwagandha was out. So what did you take? Week one. 400 milligrams magnesium glycinate at 9 p.m. She noticed she fell asleep faster, but still woke at 2 a.m. So you added L-theanine? Yes. Week two, 300 milligrams L-theanine with the magnesium. Waking episodes dropped from three per night to one. Still not perfect though. Right. Week three, we added three grams glycine right before bed. That was the game changer. She slept through the night. And when melatonin is suppressed, you lose deep, slow wave sleep. That's the stage where your brain clears waste, consolidates memory. She'd been taking 10 milligrams. We cut it down to 0.3 milligrams at 7 p.m. Her sleep quality improved even more. So her final stack was magnesium, L-theanine, glycine, and low dose melatonin. Exactly. And six months later, she's still sleeping seven to eight hours straight. No more 2 a.m. wake ups. Energy is back, mood is stable. This is the power of targeting the root cause, elevated nighttime cortisol, instead of just masking symptoms with sleeping pills. And sleeping pills come with serious risks, falls, cognitive decline, dependency, these supplements work with your body's natural rhythms. But they are not magic. You still need good sleep hygiene. Cool room, dark environment, no screens before bed. Right. Supplements support good habits. They don't replace them. 
Let's summarize the five supplements and key takeaways. Number one, magnesium glycinate, 300 to 400 milligrams, one hour before bed. Regulates stress response, activates GABA. Number two, L-theanine, 200 to 400 milligrams, 30 to 45 minutes before bed. Promotes calm alertness, reduces perceived stress. Number three, glycine, three grams right before bed. Lowers core body temperature, improves sleep quality. Number four, melatonin, 0 0.3 milligrams, two to three hours before bed. Not five or 10 milligrams, that's too much. Number five, ashwagandha, 300 to 500 milligrams, only if thyroid function is normal. Get tested first. Key mistake to avoid, taking too much melatonin. More is not better. It creates dependency. Another mistake, taking everything at once without testing. Start with magnesium. Add one supplement per week. And always check for drug interactions, especially if you're on thyroid medication, blood thinners, or blood pressure medication. Here's what I want you to do this week. If you're struggling with nighttime waking or early morning cortisol spikes, start with magnesium glycinate only. Take it for seven days. Notice if you fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer, wake up less groggy. If magnesium helps but isn't enough, add L-theanine in week two. Build slowly. And remember, this information is educational. Always consult your doctor before starting new supplements, especially if you're on medications. We want to hear from you. Are you taking any of these five supplements? What's been your experience? Text underscore eight. Next time, we're tackling morning cortisol, the opposite problem. How to naturally boost it when you wake up so you have energy all day. Because cortisol isn't the enemy. It's about having the right amount at the right time. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other.